This has been an amazing experience. This is my first time to Campus Party, and I have been surprised and really happy to see the energy and the passion and everyone here, it's gaming, it's technology, there's entrepreneurs, there's students. And it's really a credit to you that you're taking this time to work with other people, people that are smart like yourselves, that are passionate and driven, because that is the key. And when I was evaluating the day, I thought about how this day really reminds me of NVIDIA. NVIDIA is smart people. There's passionate gamers. We work as a team. We take risks. We fail. When we fail, we learn. And we come back. We come back stronger. And that's what you guys are doing today. You're embarking upon that. And if you keep those thoughts and that passion and skill, you will be in a great place 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now where you're an old guy like myself getting gray hair. We're gonna talk about some of the amazing things NVIDIA is doing today. But the reason we're doing those things today, it's, it's not something that happened overnight. It's 25 years of hard work. It's 25 years of learning. It's 25 years of making mistakes. And it's 25 years of being committed to being the best. 25 years ago, NVIDIA helped invent the GPU. Back then, they were called VGAs, Video Graphic Accelerators. You plugged them into your computer and helped bring a new era of graphics, much of which drove the revolution of gaming to help things like the PlayStation launch and, and Xbox and amazing PC graphics that you see today and visual computing. But over the course in, in the 90s and in the 2000s, as Moore's laws took place and more and more transistors were fitting on a chip, the GPU was becoming integrated into the CPU. And back in the 90s, there were over 30 companies producing GPUs. Today, there's two. And one of them has about an 80% market share in the business, and it's got there by going a different direction. And it's something that I like to think about in my life. If you're in a business, and the business is, and pricing is going down, and the pricing is, or the product is being commoditized, that's nowhere for a smart, creative, intelligent business person to exist. Anybody can sell low-end, cheap commodity. You'll find no rainbow there. NVIDIA made a strategic decision and went the opposite way. And said instead of being integrated into CPUs, we're gonna make amazing GPUs that will explode visual computing and provide opportunities that we don't even realize what they'll be today, but we know it's gonna happen. And so some of the things I'm gonna talk about today are a result of that decision. Nobody in 2000 would have believed that a gamer would pay $700 or $1,000 for a GPU today, or $4,000 for a beautiful rig, or $2,000 for a laptop for gaming. But they do it because when you do amazing things, you can deliver amazing experiences. So every one of you out there who have bought NVIDIA GPUs or PCs or notebooks, or G-Sync monitors, you've all contributed to the success story and to the future of what's coming from NVIDIA because you believed in buying great products and you're fostering these opportunities. Gaming has never been better. There's over two billion gamers in the world today. It is growing leaps and bounds. There are over 200 million people who are playing on GeForce platforms today. VR, 4K, and HDR will grow 10 times in the next five years. 100 million MOBA players, primarily be driven by eSports, double two years ago. And Twitch, 600 million viewers, up at 1.5 times in the last year. 
So there's never been a better time to be a gamer because it's just gonna get better. The bigger the ecosystem gets, the bigger the possibilities to succeed are. So you'll find us in a lot of different products. We don't consider ourselves a chip. A chip company ships a product and it's done. They go on to the next sale and they go spin the next chip. When you buy a product from us, you can count on years and years of game ready software drivers so that you have a great experience no matter what game you're playing. So we are a platform. We work the software as much as we do the hardware. We worked with MSI to build VR backpacks. Over the course of the next year, VR is gonna get less expensive, more powerful, there's better games coming. Fall looks amazing in VR. I'm looking forward to that. We've got external GeForce consoles that you can plug into your laptop. G-Sync monitors for smooth, beautiful, seamless play at 4K. And new GeForce laptops. We just released Max-Q, and they're coming to a store near you soon. So look what's happened with the power of the Pascal chip. The performance has gotten better. The thermals required are, are less now. So we're able to pack a lot of power into thin and light. From just a couple years ago, a 10 pound laptop can now be packaged into an 18 millimeter notebook. Less than five pounds, three times the performance. GTX 1080 fits into these powerful laptops. So that was gaming, and gaming has set the stage for some of the remarkable things I'm gonna talk about today. Walking around, I heard a lot about Moore's Law today. I saw a number of presentations, people talking about it. Moore's Law was amazing. A number of transistors that we were able to continue to put on a small semiconductor chip. But what's happened is we're no longer getting the additional performance on a single thread that we had over the last 25 years. Yes, we're putting more and more transistors on smaller and smaller chips every day, but we need performance. And something amazing is happening right now. The big bang of learning, AI and deep learning the biggest technological revolutions over the last 40 years, and it'll be the biggest technological re revolution in your lifetime, and you're right at the beginning of it. So this big bang of deep learning needs something. It needs power. And GPUs will fill that void. But it's just not the chip. If you look at the GPU performance of computing, it's still increasing at 1.5 times per year. But the gap we need to fill in just the next eight years is a thousand times. And we can fill it, and we will fill it with the GPUs. But it's just not the hardware. It's the applications, the algorithms, it's the systems, and of course, CUDA, which is our ability to parallel process the CPU and the GPU simultaneously to do hypercomputing. Over the last two years, this deep learning phenomenon is starting to take root. Just in the last year, one million people downloaded CUDA. 511,000 developers, 11 times more over the last five years, are now working on GPUs. And $5 billion was given just to startup companies, not counting the big stuff. These are small startup companies, people like yourselves out there with a brilliant idea, with a passion, that want to try and experiment, and want to solve problems, want to make this a better world, and want to have an impact. That's a lot of money for a nascent industry. And the result, there's 1,300 deep starting learnups out there today, and they're across all industries. Healthcare, retail, financial. 
I used to have a money manager I used to pay a bunch of money to. I took 1% of everything I had every year. Now, I go to Charles Schwab for 17 basis points. He's out, that, that computer program is outperforming the best money managers. And he's saving me some money. So I'll be able to buy a Cerveza tonight because I'm gonna need one after this. Security, manufacturing, autonomous machines. Every industry is being affected with deep learning and these startups are gonna be the future giant companies of the world. Transportation is probably the industry over the next 15 years where you will see the most profound effect. 280 billion miles a year are driven by trucks moving things. And I guarantee you, it's not the most efficient way of picking up, dropping off merchandise and delivering systems. All that mode of mapping and who, and who will be driving these things is going to change. You want to talk about a waste of real estate. Parking lots. 800 million parking spots in the United States for 250 million cars. Another thing is there's a billion cars in the world today, over a billion, and at any given point, 90% of those cars are parked. What a waste of capital. That won't be the future. We're not all gonna own cars. We're not gonna need to own a car. You fire up on your app, most likely you won't even touch something, you just call. Need a car to the Westin in five minutes. And you're gonna have a car plan, it's gonna show up, there's the car, and off you go. Domino's, they deliver a million pizzas a day. And guess what? They're gonna be out of the driver delivery uh, delivery business someday. They're already building vehicles for delivering pizzas driverlessly, and they're do doing custom vehicles for pizzas. The odds are, some years from now, the pizza will probably be baking as on its way to you. And all this is gonna be done through AI. And robots. You're seeing a lot on robots. I've seen a lot of uh, you guys working today on various robotics, pretty amazing. But these robots are gonna infinitely change our lives forever. Even today, if you look at it, we already have 10% of the manufacturing tasks by robots. There's the, the pizzas being delivered by Domino's. It says a million pizzas a day. Yeah, um, a hundred million people today in the world over 80 years old. It's a lot of workers needed to care for those people. And robots will be doing it. And they'll be able to service you when you want, how you want. And they'll all be customized to what you need to be serviced. Ag. It was just over in France two weeks ago and they have drones flying over all the vineyards every day so that the vineyard managers know where to go, what plants have health issues, what plants need trimming, where they have potential problems with pests, right? They no longer have to walk through hectares or acres of vineyards every day. And now when they map and they spray or take care of the vineyards, after the drones have flown over the vineyards, they send out automated machines that can go out there and maintain the specific plants that had problems. And we're only at the beginning. 600,000 bridges need to be inspected just in the United States. Drones checking them out, delivering pictures. Hundreds of millions of miles of wire that needs to be inspected. 300 million operations per year. And robots will be involved in all this stuff. The key to robots is going to be how do you train them. You can't necessarily put a robot behind a car and say, drive this thing and have it learn on its own. That's what 18-year-olds do. And they cost money to fix. I know I've got 18-year-olds and cars. But the robot will be able to do it someday. It'll be able to take on any task. But how do you train it will be the key. And NVIDIA, what we're doing, 
is we are building a simulator for a robot. So the robot can learn in a virtual world. There's no damage to be done. Because trial and error is the best way to learn. So we could take a robot and teach it virtual. But better than that, we could create a virtual robot and put a virtual robot in a virtual world and train that virtual robot and create a neural network for that robot. Then we can take those robots and we can multiply them by 12, have them do the same tasks. Take all the neural learnings and build one super smart robot. It's like 30 of you guys are in a class taking a test. And what if the teacher passed out the test? And all 30 you get together and come up with the right answers and you get to turn them in as a group. You're probably gonna have a better score. Well, that's exactly what we're doing at NVIDIA. Our Isaac Robot Simulator, we are training robots for the future on all types of tasks. And in short order, they're going to be doing a lot of work for us. Now, some people are concerned like, what kind of work are we gonna do? The robots taking over all of our work. Well, in the year 1900, people were saying the same thing about the automobile. There were 300,000 blacksmiths making shoes for horses that were worried about being put out of work. Safe to say, uh, I think the automobile business has uh, created a few more jobs. There's car dealers, there's salesmen, there's repair people. Car stereos have to go in cars. Millions of jobs. Guadalajara is one of the best places in North America for making cars, right in your own backyard here. So, I don't know what we're gonna replace, but we're humans and we drive ourselves on innovation and creativity and social, and those things aren't gonna change. But the GPU time for computing is now. And we talked about the ecosystem of PCs and transportation, intelligent machines, deep learnings. The great thing about NVIDIA business model is that if we spend two and a half billion dollars a year on R&D for GPUs, those same R&D dollars can drive the most amazing games. We can improve the level of graphics and the special effects and the immersiveness of every game you play. We can take those same chip and use it for self-driving cars. Take the same chip and use it for intelligent machines. And the same chip and use it for deep learning. So the value we get is much greater. And as these businesses grow, we have more R&D dollars, we get to drive these entire ecosystems. And so that's the value. It's a great business model. It has tremendous leverage. And when you're thinking about your careers and the businesses that you're going to manage, start, and run, and work for, think about the business model you're in. How do you expand and yet stay in your core? Because our core is technology and GPUs. It's hardware, it's software, it's integration, it's building products. Some of the things that show that the AI is really taken off you know, if you look at self-driving cars, right now Tesla has many capable cars out there. Uh, they use the NVIDIA uh, PX Drive platform, and they're currently at level three, and over the course of the next few years, you'll see them get to completely self-driving, level five. Okay, Google, 20% of the searches on Google today are voice searches. That's only increasing every day. The, the ability to be hands-free and, and for it to customize, to know our voice, is becoming better every day. Voice activation is gonna be more profound every day we move forward. In AlphaGo, in 19, I think it was 97, Big Blue beat uh, Gary Kasparov in chess. And Gary Kasparov's master chess champion, uh, they didn't think anyone could beat him. And that was child's play. Go is thousands of times more sophisticated than chess. 
And back then, they said it would take a hundred years for a computer to beat the world champion in Go, yet in 2016 it did. And there are millions of decision possibilities in Go. <clears throat> so this era of machine learning that's gonna impact all of us. What are the requirements? First of all, great math, algorithms. People have been working on algorithms for artificial intelligence since 1947. I think in the 1960s, Dartmouth started an artificial intelligence laboratory. But it didn't get very far. Because we had algorithms, and we had data. But we didn't have computational potential. We didn't have the GPU. We didn't have accelerated computing. But we have that today. And in the last month, we just released our new architecture for artificial intelligence deep learning. It's called Volta. The Tesla Volta 100 is a giant leap for artificial intelligence. We created a new tensor, our own tensor core, which allows us to use accelerators to drive the performance of those GPUs even greater than the Pascal. If you look now, we got 21 billion transistors on a 12 nanometer fin fit chip with 815 millimeter squared of surface area. That's about as big as you can make a chip. That is a ton of horsepower. 5,100 CUDA cores. And previously, you could you could, you could run 15 floating point 32 teraflops. That was great. But now, with the new accelerators of TensorCore, you can run 120 tensor teraflops with one GPU, which is amazing. And you can see 300 uh, gigabytes a second transfer speed with NVIDIA Link. So it's amazing. So in seconds, less than seconds actually, you can take a beautiful image, one, another art style of another. You can, you can create your own art uh, by the computers just rendering these things. So I'm looking forward to the day where we can create really immersive video games through artificial intelligence because it'll be faster to produce, the worlds will be more realistic, it could be more sci-fi or sci -fi if you like it too as well. But that's gonna come. It's gonna reduce the cost of developing video games and it's gonna bring games to the market faster and it's really gonna help things like VR. You know, creating those 360 virtual worlds. And so more products coming down the pipe. We wanna support deep learning and artificial intelligence in every segment possible. So we have uh, our DGX1 with Tesla, which is eight Tesla uh, Volta GPUs. And we've been able to reduce from eight days to do the processing on what it did at Titan X. So Titan X a year ago was like, oh my God, Titan X, the world's the most amazing GPU. A year later, it's outdated. <laughs> this is equivalent to having 400 servers in one box. So the computational power is just, just mind-blowing. And for the do-it-yourselfer out there who has about $79,000 laying around, could have bought a Tesla, but could buy a DGX station instead and do some real work out there and change the world. And uh, you can see those are the numbers, uh, pretty, pretty amazing, only at 1,500 watts to drive uh, that kind of power. And uh, that's just what it looks like there. Okay, it gets better though. So we now use, uh, use Tensor, which is uh, TensorFlow, you know, Google's uh, compiler. And we're able to now root the information even better in the processing. And we, we're able to do inferencing faster and move more data more quickly than ever. And if you look, uh, just today now, we've got 
Well, I, I got six. We were, this is about a. Uh, just recently, before we did the uh, Volta, we were able to produce with the P100 about 600 images a second we could run through with a latency of about 10 milliseconds. But now, with TensorFlow and our new uh, core, we're able to run over 5,000 images at seven milliseconds. So it's amazing the type of inference we can do. And the key to artificial intelligence is inferencing, getting data, more and more data, feeding these, feeding these neural networks, getting them smarter, letting them build their own uh, structures than to use that information. We're also taking this to the cloud. So we're, we have cloud service that you'll be able to do a hyperscale inferencing with the V100 as well. And it's 15 to 25 times the inference speed of Skylake today. The other amazing thing about GPUs and the versatility is the ability to accelerate data centers. So if you look here on the left, you got 500 nodes of CPU servers. But if you introduce just 15 Tesla, Volta 100s, you can reduce to 33 nodes and get the same GPU acceleration. So it's, it's amazing. So I was mentioning earlier that the automotive transformation in self-driving cars would probably be the first thing that's gonna affect us all the most. And we've been working for the last four years very hard. And when we started out doing this, we were kind of tripping and falling, and, and, and we were learning, but we weren't, we weren't learning as much as we thought we should or at the rate. Because if you read through the papers or you search self-driving cars, everybody in the world is doing a self-driving car. Everyone. Everyone's got a technology. Everyone's got a play on it. Everyone except Fred Flintstone, if you guys know who he is. So we said, how do we get better at this? And I think this is another life lesson, another business lesson that we should think about you know, putting in your tool set. I said, if we really want to be the experts in self-driving cars, we need an end-to-end, end-to-end -end solution. Not just the design of, the, of this, the GPU, not just the software layers, not just the integration. We need to build a car. We need to drive that thing. We need to get feedback from that car. And so we did. So we built our own cars. And so we put millions of miles on cars. And that is where we really started learning. And so we've got a phrase at NVIDIA, we eat what we cook. And, and I think you should think about that as like, if you're gonna go into something, you're working on a segment of a business, you need to understand the end to end. If, if you can't do the other thing, then get the best partners, get the smarter partners, get those that are gonna enable you, that are gonna fill in the gaps because that's when the trajectory is really gonna take off for you. So, some of the things we're working on are like mapping. We're working on co-pilot. So co-pilot, you know, you're, you're not paying attention and the co-pilot can uh, wake you up and say, hey, pay attention, there's something happening. They, they can watch you with eye tracking and see where your eyes are or you're dozing off when you're driving your car. So this is, this is before level five. Level five is complete, the car is doing everything. Level four, the car is doing most of it. Level three, the car is doing a lot of it, but you still have to you know, stay alert, hands on the wheel. So, if you're gonna be a partner, you go get the best partners. So, we have, we're working with Toyota, and they're working with us on Drive PX. As I mentioned, we're in Tesla. We have, we're working with Audi, we're working with uh, Daimler-Benz. Go get the best partners. We work with Bosch, they're a key partner of ours. And then we develop specific hardware and software layers for these autonomous cars. And this is our product called Xavier, which delivers 30 tops of uh, uh, DL at just 30 watts, very power efficient. And every car, has to have 
do, which is good for business because you need redundancy in, in cars, right? If your computer breaks down, something happens to your monitor, big deal. If your car computer goes down on self-driving mode, that's a problem. So you have to have redundancy. And the uh, Xavier system has been adopted uh, and endorsed by many of our partners already. And um, we just started uh, releasing it out there open source. So another one of the NVIDIA tenants is we're an open source company. We love using open source software. We like making it better. We love taking what we know and putting it out there, giving it to partners, giving it to entrepreneurs who want to learn. That's how we invented CUDA. CUDA came about because we had partners that were exploring some of our software layers and how they could accelerate GPUs. And when you do the good things, and you're transparent, and you're open, and you try to help others, good things come back to you. And this is just a great example of how you know, the NVIDIA you know, culture of being open has come back to help us. And it's the reason we're doing so much of this today. Because if we didn't have CUDA, we wouldn't have the type of revolution going on in deep learning today because we wouldn't have all this accelerated learning. And the GPU would probably be driving some nice PCs, great gaming, um, it's good for the world, love it, but it's probably not gonna change the world as much as what we're gonna be able to do with the AI revolution. So just to kind of recap what we, we talked about here, the Tesla Volta is just world class, there's nothing close to it. You can find it in, 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 in data centers. You can get it from the, you can get cloud services. You can buy a DGX. Tensor Core, our own proprietary uh, accelerators for GPUs. Software matters. We have about 11,000 employees at NVIDIA today. Hopefully some of you will be joining us. We've hired 2,000 in the last two years and we're hiring like crazy. You just have to be hardworking, smart, passionate, open-minded, transparent, all those things I mentioned before. But the uh, the, t the, the Tensor thing that will, is, is just amazing for us. And then of course, more great partners. You can see some of the partners we're working, Alibaba, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, right? NVIDIA is in every cloud out there today. And um, talk about Xavier, our uh, deep learning accelerators for automotive partnerships, partnerships matter, and of course Isaac, creating virtual worlds for virtual computers to get really smart, not just virtual smart, and build neuro networks that are going to help us solve amazing problems that we don't even know what they are today but they will be spotting problems before we will because they're gonna have learned so much because they're gonna have millions and millions of experiences in them the day they were born. So you guys should be excited because you guys are at the forefront of this stuff and because you're here today, it means you get it. You understand technology, you're passionate, you're here to learn, you could be out at a bar tonight with your buddies, having a couple of cocktails, but you're where you should be, where you need to be. That bar and that cocktail is always gonna be there. But these opportunities don't come often, but you're sitting in one right now in every one of those chairs, and I hope that you guys are part of the NVIDIA and the AR revolution. Again, appreciate all your support for GeForce Gaming, NVIDIA. Excited to be here. We're gonna take some Q&A, but thank you very much.